the Woman in White by Wilkie Collins was really the the invention of the, the detective novel. You know, funnily enough, I didn't know the book. Um, I remembered it from, I, I guess, school days, vaguely. Um, but I, I didn't really know it. And uh, three years ago, I was casting around to find something to write. And somebody said to me, have you ever thought about the woman in white? And sort of triggered something up there, you know. So I, I got hold of the book, which is extremely long. I and mean, this is a vast, great volume. And... I, I got somebody to do a precy of it, and, and I thought, hang on, you know, there is something here. I think what draws people to get to it is, is the Victorian romance of it. It's the kind of Harlequin romance. Telling those lush, romantic, gothic kind of stories. Uh, and I think he's hit on the right formula for this. And I, lo I do love the way that it's kind of an old-fashioned story, a, a pot boiler, a, a melodrama. I wanted to say big, lush, romantic, wonderful, old-style old musical. This is, this is it. People are used to not listening to lyrics, and it's been, you know, probably since the, the the golden age of musicals, where people sort of turned off and they the music begins and they stop listening. And so we wanted to make sure that we underlined all the important points. So much of Broadway right now is sort of dancing and glitz and glam, and ours is more a story that you and a mystery that you've got to listen to. You can't just sit back; you actually have to sit forward and, and follow the story quite carefully. I feels incredibly theatrical. It's a, you know, a theatre piece with, with um, wonderful, tense uh, music that takes you from scene to scene. I think that Andrew is becoming increasingly <laughs> courageous and uh, increasingly um, musically demanding. The uh, music has a, a romanticism and a lushness to it that uh, uh, I, I think it's his best score. I really do. They cannot take away my secret Though it's something I can't share with you It's locked inside my heart, my secret But there's someone I must tell it to when Andrew described what he wanted to do with the music, which is he wanted to move from uh, a hilltop into a house, and from the house, you know, into a London bar, you know, Trevor's response to that was, how do we do that? And we had to do something that wasn't to do with um, physical scenery. It wasn't to do with flying cloths in or trucking trucks in. And uh, I was very fascinated with the possibilities of video, so we developed this system together. I hadn't actually thought that this would be the way we would necessarily do it. I mean, one of the great things about when you work with a, with a great director, uh, they always have ideas. Some of the, the scenes are, are set in such a way where your movements are timed towards the movement of the screens. And because they are, are inhuman and are set to a specific pattern, we as humans have to be very careful to make sure that we're technically on the beat. It's so weird because once you're up there, you forget what's behind you, because it, you know, it's computer pixels to us. We can't really see what room we're in until you get far enough back from it. So um, sitting out in the audience during rehearsal was important because you needed to just remind yourself of what 
your room looks like and what your environment looks like. If you get th come through the wrong door, you know, you're, you're walking through a wall or you're crashing through a tree or something. So for somebody like me who loves to actually be instinctive and feel everything, it, it was quite a thing to actually have to go, ooh, right, left door, open, shut, move three steps to the right to avoid coming out of the horse's bottom, you know, that sort of thing. No, it took great courage for this visit. But I must admit, I'm glad that I am here. And that dress you're falling out of is exquisite. Though I'm trembling, it is clearly not from fear. It's infinitely more terrifying than, say, some kind of horror story or something like that, because the mystery surrounding this story is something that could happen to any of us. What I always say to myself before I do this show is tell the story. You're really, really clear about, you know, not, not displaying anything or, or, or showing off or anything, just absolutely keep the clarity of the story. If you've got a great story with good characters um, that keeps an audience guessing, uh, keeps its readers guessing in the case of the novel, then, you know, it's always going to survive. We have preserved and enhanced that element in our production to the point where I believe this this is a different kind of musical for an audience. This is a musical where you you don't sit back in the, and it comes at you. You have to listen to each plot point as the worm turns in this piece. And boy, when it turns, it's, it's a shocker.